Good morning. Welcome to The Morning Coffee, part of Provoking Safety, the channel where we think, talk, and do safety with the intention of provoking safety at home and in the workplace. The Morning Coffee is my opportunity to, well, I guess provoke safety in your minds as you start the day. It's September 1st. It's Tuesday. Good morning. Uh, happy September 1st. Really not a lot of significance occurring. It's, uh, if you're in the UK, it's the first day of autumn. We got 21 days left of summer, so yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the next three weeks. Kids, you're gonna be heading off to school pretty soon, so enjoy it while you can. Anyway, that's about it for all of the morning niceties. Uh, let's uh, get into the article today. Let's get into it. Yeah, you read it right. A uh, company has been fined after a propane worker caught fire in Chesley. Now, as I've said before, if people or companies or entities have been found guilty in a court of law, I'm not here to try them again. All my intention is, is to point out what went on, give some advice and uh, look at some preventive measures so that this won't occur again. In other words, I want to provoke safety. So let's have a quick look here. As I said, not up to retrying someone in the court of public opinion or in social media. Off with his head! Just want to talk about the story and outline what occurred really quick and then talk about some preventive measures. Propane Fuel Company was fined $150,000. A young man, 23 years old, a young worker uh, in a lot of jurisdictions, ended up uh, in a propane accident and as a result caught fire. Not sure of the extent of his injuries. You'll I'll leave a link to the article in the description, of course. You'll be able to see that his sweater and his vest, I'm assuming his high-vis vest, burnt up in the mishap. So it's a good possibility he suffered some severe and extensive injuries. Don't know for sure. All we know is the group was, or the company was fined 150,000 plus a 25% victim surcharge was also levied. The company was found guilty of failing to provide information and instruction and supervision to a worker to protect, protect the health and safety of the worker. This is a, a charge that is common usually across jurisdictions in Canada. Uh, employers have the responsibility to provide information, instruction, and supervision of a worker to guarantee their safety or do the utmost to protect their safety. All workers have the right to know about the hazards involved with their job and the right to know about the controls or preventive measures that uh, will reduce those hazards or eliminate. This occurred November 21st, 2018, so things take a long time through investigation and court, etc. The worker, as I said, was 23 years old. He was transferring propane from a propane truck to a residential home. It was found the nozzle wasn't properly connected and it blew off the propane tank that when he was filling up. Sprayed propane into the air. Uh, his clothes were ended up saturated with it, turned gaseous and into the air, etc. As a result, a fire occurred. The worker was able to roll around in the snow and extinguish the flames. However, let's look at some of the extenuating circumstances here. I'm not a big proponent of root cause. I like to look at all of the contributing factors and then work on eliminating each in, a, in order to prevent accidents or incidents. The injured worker had started working for the company earlier that month. He received one day of online training. Seriously? One day. What people hear and see, they often forget. What they do, they remember. You know, kind of like a work orientation. That's a great idea. Just saying. There was supposed to be a certification training session for the worker, and it was scheduled to take place two days after the explosion. That's some hindsight. The worker wasn't wearing eye protection or adequate gloves. His clothes were fire resistant, and the man's vest and sweater, as I mentioned before, melted and caught fire. Uh, he ha there was protective gear on order for him. It was ordered three weeks prior to the explosion. It hadn't arrived yet. This is a lot of things. Let, let's have a look at things here. What happens in most cases, it's happened to me, I'm sure it's happened to many of you out there, is you start a new job, you start on the job, and all of the cool HR stuff is done first. You, you know, all of the Revenue Canada forms, the payroll forms are all filled out and signed. 
A lot of times nowadays it's conflict of interest and the bullying harassment policy and all of that stuff gets done. And then, yeah, maybe uh, we'll schedule a safety thing uh, maybe day after tomorrow or whatever when we can get you all together or whatever. And then, you know, the people that are doing the equipment operation are scheduled with the front end, new front end receptionists and maybe a new manager and a few people and you're all lumped into a room to do the safety orientation. Well, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? I don't know. Let's go out on a limb and just talk about the idea. Why don't we do the safety orientation as soon as possible? Like, you know, let's schedule all that cool HR stuff at the end of day one. Let's make sure that the worker knows what to do in case of a fire, how to get first aid, uh, how to report accidents, how to report unsafe action. What's their job hazard assessment? What are the hazards associated with the job? What are the controls for those hazards? You know, novel idea. Maybe this crap won't happen anymore. Schedule that HR stuff at the end of the day. Okay? I mean, weigh the, if you have to, Look at the hazards, the potential hazards with the worker's job and the tasks that they're going to perform. If they're not very hazardous and they're not be, going to be exposed to a lot of hazards, sure, maybe that safety orientation can wait to the end of the day. Except maybe you might want to talk about what to, can occur in case of fire and how to report incidents and how to get first aid. Let's look at new higher orientations and the safety portion as a priority. What the heck, then maybe we might fix these things. Let's look at the hazards associated with the jobs and make sure all of the controls are in place. And then finally, instead of saying, hey, do you have this book full of tickets? Let's ensure that there's worker competency before they start doing all of these hazardous tasks on their own. There was a movie a while ago, a true story about a fellow a con man, Frank Abagnale, I think was his name who managed to fly, I think, a couple hundred flights as the pilot, never touched the controls, never flew once, but flew all over the place as a pilot because he was able to impersonate it. I'm pretty sure lots of people have likely coasted through some skills in their job. As an employer, you're responsible for making sure they're competent prior to releasing them. You know what you're doing. Anyway, I know, quite a bit of a rant, quite a bit passionate today, but um, yeah, I want to provoke safety. Hey, how's about that for a close? Until next time, think safety, talk safety, do safety with the intention of provoking safety at home and in the workplace. That's all. Bye for now.